She was only 21 when her group, the Mamas and the Papas, topped the charts with the song California Dreamin'. In the three short years they were together, they made their mark, coming to represent a generation and a style of music that still resonates today. Hi, I'm Ernie Manoos. Coming up on interviews, our conversation with Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, singer and actress, Michelle Phillips. When you hear a Mamas of the Papas song, can you enjoy it as just music at this point, or is it all little snapshots of your life? No, it's all music. I don't really? think of when we wrote it or when we uh, recorded it or even what it meant to us at the time. I just uh, enjoy it as music. Are you amazed that it still continues on? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knew? It wasn't what you'd planned to do. Well, you, you can never know uh, that uh, your music is is going to even be played in the first place, right. let alone uh, have some significance to people 40 years later. Uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful, but you certainly don't know it until you can look back in retrospect and say, oh, <laughs> they still want to hear it. It's great. <laughs> What's it like being induced into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? It was very, uh, it was a big honor. Yeah. Uh, it 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 took it took a while. I I had to do a little nudging to tell you the truth, and uh, because when I realized that we had been eligible for six years and we hadn't been nominated, I started to get uh, well <laughs> a little incensed actually. Yeah. And I called a couple of my friends who uh, were on the board of trustees or whatever they're called. And I said, why? And they said, well, you know, John, you know, made a few uh, enemies in the business. And I said, ah, but this isn't political. You keep saying that. Right, right. <laughs> so the next, uh, in the, ne the, the next time up, we were nominated. Yeah. I'll say the thing that surprises me the most is how short the group was really together. Two and a half years. That is amazing to me. <sighs> It was so much work. It was uh, uh, it was a continual uh, cycle of uh, writing, rehearsing, recording, and going on the road. Re re writing, rehearsing, recording, going on the road. And uh, of course, we only went on the road twice. But we were mostly a, a, a studio group. Right. We spent a lot of time in the studio. Yeah. But, Old... Uh, we did a lot of work in that two and a half years. Yeah. And it, what amazes me is the impact it's made, too. A lot of groups will have been together a short time. They'll have one or two hits. Not you folks. You had so many hits, and the, the songs are still played today, which is what's yeah. so amazing about it, because it, it escapes the time in some way, and it becomes just music out there. Yeah. Doing it, had you any idea that that's the kind of music you were doing, even? Well, we did a lot of different kinds of music. We... Uh, our music is kind of like a grab bag of stuff. Um, John was trying to write commercial music, and we were desperately trying to write commercial music. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd come out of the folk era and out of folk groups. All of us had been in folk groups. So we were trying to make that transition. And uh, in the meantime, we did a Rogers and Hart special, for instance. So we... we put the Rogers and Hart stuff on our albums because we were always short of material. <laughs> so anything that we did got on an album. We did a little jazzy stuff. Uh, uh, John was very strongly influenced by jazz and his uh, career before even the folk stuff. He was doing jazzy stuff. So we did little numbers like Once Was a Time I Thought, which was a cappella jazz, kind of Lambert Hendri Hendricks and Ross and we, we did a little of everything. Yeah. You started off, though, in all of this modeling, correct? Yes. I was modeling, actually, in San Francisco when I met John when I was 17, doing a lot of ramp work. and. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you ever miss that? Would you have liked to have gone the modeling route as opposed to the musical oh, route? God, no. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I did just, just enough modeling. It was fun. I um, modeled in San Francisco... And 
Then I went to New York with John, and I modeled in New York. I still have my modeling books, which are really kind of funny. Oh, cool. Um, I did a lot of teenage lingerie, which was my specialty. <laughs> And it also, uh, you, you got paid double for it. I, I, you probably still do. Yeah. And uh, so I have my lingerie book and I have my regular modeling book. And they're really funny. Yeah, I heard at some point that someone had said to you, probably John, that, you know, sing with the group. You'll make more money than you do modeling. Is that yes, true? Yes, yes. Uh, he, he had been in the folk group. And when the folk group broke up, we were living in New York. And I knew he was planning to put a group back together. And I had never had any ambition at all to sing. I, I, I wasn't a singer, although I, I would sing parts for him if he would say, hey, Mitch, sing this part for me, and I would sing. And I had sung a little bit in church when I was growing up. My, my grandfather was a Baptist minister, and I used to sing in the car with my sister. But that was the extent of my uh, singing. Yeah. And... We were going through the Holland Tunnel one night, and he said, you know, when I put this group back together, you're going to be in it. <laughs> and I said, why? Why? Why Why would you do that? He said, because it's the only way we can justify your expenses on the road. <laughs> <laughs> so a practical reason to have yeah. you in the group. Yeah, he was a very pragmatic fellow. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I said, but, you know, I can't really sing well enough to do that. He says, you sing just fine. <laughs> yeah. We always hear, too, when there are strong women in any kind of group, they always, tabloids love to say that there's fighting and there's battling. With you and Cass Elliot, did you get along? Was there tensions there, or was it just you were friends? We were mostly friends, but there was tension in our group all the time. That's what um, we wrote about. Right. If there was no tension, there was nothing to write about. <laughs> so you had done it long before Fleetwood Mac went through all uh-huh. of that. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but Cass and I were very, very good friends. Yeah. And uh, she taught me a lot about singing. She gave me a lot of confidence about singing. She would always say, hey, Mitch, you know, just go for the note. You know I'm going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'll get there. Yeah. So just just make the effort. You know, John always had his singing up in the stratosphere. Yeah. So we were always, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, she she made it easier for me yeah. to, uh, uh, you know, to feel secure. Eventually, the group breaks up. Do you wish it had gone on longer or at when it finally said goodbye was good for you? I always thought of the group as a little bubble, that really beautiful, colorful bubble that someday was, had to burst. Yeah. And uh, it felt perfectly natural to end it when we did. Cass had had her little girl. I was pregnant with China. And neither one of us wanted to be in the studio, and we certainly didn't want to be on the road. Mm-hmm. And we had all this wonderful success behind us. It was the perfect time to say, I do. <laughs> and go on to other things. You were still so young. To give that up at that point and say, okay, now that's behind me. Were you scared at that point? Was there, now what do I do with my life? No, I, I really? was uh, looking forward to something new. And, you know, the great part about it also is that we had royalties coming in. <laughs> it wasn't nice. like we were going to starve. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's good to go on to a new career when you've got that kind of padding yeah. financially that you can, um, you, it takes a lot of the tension out of it. Right. And uh, I had always thought it would be kind of fun to act. So I had uh, friends in the acting community who said, if you want to act, you should join some workshops and really learn how to do it. When you went into acting, was there a feeling, she's a singer, she shouldn't be in here acting, or were they accepting of you? No, they were not accepting of me. <laughs> there was exactly that, that feeling. In the same way that when actresses want to be singers, mm-hmm. 
you know, the, the singing community goes, oh, dear, <laughs> what are we going to do with this one? <laughs> and, um, you know, you have, to, you, have to, you have to show them that you can actually get up at 5 o'clock in the morning when they think that that's when you generally go to bed. <laughs> and you have to show them that you can learn lines and that you can be good and that you can, um, you, that you can be a believable actress. And, and also that you're not going to be a prima donna. And I was starting a career from scratch. Yeah. And I, uh, I realized that I, I really had to treat it like this was new, that I, w- I, I didn't, ha- didn't have the mamas and papas behind me, and I was coming into this, you know, kind of <clears throat> all glorified. Could you do it? Could you get around to getting up the time? How hard was that for you as a person to make that shift? Actually, I think I'm more of a morning person. <laughs> Really? As it turned out. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I loved it and I loved working. I was I was just so grateful when uh parts started coming in and and uh I was being offered things. I I <laughs> I was so grateful. Uh that uh yeah, I, I was always very prepared. I was always on time. I think uh I really made uh an effort, a very extra the extra effort to to be a good little team player. Now, as I remember correctly, too, the first big thing you were out in was <clears throat> Dillinger. Yes. And you got a Golden Globe nomination right off the bat. Yes. Did that surprise you? Were you like, I knew I could do this? <laughs> no, it did surprise me. I I, I was very flattered. And, uh, of course, I, I already had established a pretty nice relationship with the, with the, the foreign press mm-hmm. uh, so uh, yeah but it's it still surprised me and I was uh, I was uh, I was very honored tell me a little about the movie Valentino well <laughs> Valentino was a very uh, it, it was one of the last big Hollywood films where they spent a lot of money uh, you spent hours in makeup and Wardrobe was very elaborate, and um, <clears throat> but Rudolf Nureyev was very poorly cast as Valentino. You could barely understand his English, mm-hmm. and uh, and he hated acting. Really? Yes. And you never knew who was going to be next to you in that makeup trailer <laughs> at six o'clock in the morning. He he could be very nice and charming, or he could be just awful. He, really? he was. Uh, <clears throat> he was. He was used to being the uh, the prince of the ballet stage, and he expected everybody to treat him like that. Yeah. And he uh, also felt that it was perfectly all right for him to mis- mistreat everybody else on the set, because that's what he was used to doing. But then he could be the most charming man in the world. He he had a. Uh, very much of a Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. Hyde uh, part, sides to him. Uh, it was a, a film that, when it was released, uh, did very well in huge metropolitan cities like <clears throat> London, New York. Yeah. That, that was about it. <laughs> <laughs> Those two huge cosmopolitan cities. I'm going to move you ahead a little bit just because I need to talk about this. Knott's Landing. Oh, yeah. Was it as much fun to do as it seems to watch back? It, it was. You, you loved going to work in the morning. <clears throat> Knott's was... Uh, I had never seen the show before I was asked to do it. And David Jacobs just asked me to lunch one day, and he said, you know, we've got a part that we have written for you, and um, you would be playing... Nicolette Sheridan's mother, who I had no idea who she was, but um, we'd like for you to do the show. And I had to admit to him that I'd never <laughs> actually seen it. And he said, well, I'll send over uh, the last two weeks, and then tonight's Thursday, so you can see an- another episode of it tonight, and you can let me know tomorrow. And by 11 o'clock that night, I was firmly hooked 
What was it that, that drew you in? Just the storylines. They were <laughs> wonderful. And the acting was great. The writing was fantastic. Yeah. It was one of the best written shows on television. It survived for 14 seasons. Amazing. I don't think people realize how long. And you'd come in, then your character left, then it came back again. Then you were right. in for a good chunk of time at yeah. the end. I did six years altogether. Yeah, wonderful. And then you went back for the reunion movie, too. Yeah, but, you know, the, that, that was kind of ill-conceived also. It was too soon to, re, to do a reunion. And um, they couldn't get everybody to come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nicolette didn't want to come back. It, it took forces of, you know, God to get her to come to do one scene. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and yeah. now she's doing Desperate Housewives. Now, if they asked you to come on and be her mother on that, would you, would oh, you go and do it? it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think that would be wonderful casting. Yeah. That would be kind of a uh, Well, we the were a very good mother-daughter team. You were. And uh, we used to sit in the trailer in the morning when we were getting our makeup done, uh, going over our scenes, <clears throat> and we'd say, how can we make this even nastier? <laughs> <laughs> how can I be even worse to you than I am? And uh, we would sit there and, <laughs> you know, try to make our characters even more devious than they were. Now, in one episode, if I remember correctly, you went back and sang a Mamas and Papas song. You went back and did one of your songs. I didn't actually sing it. They played it over uh, a scene where Mac and I are talking in front of the fireplace. Oh, okay. And then they, 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 were, they were playing dedicated <clears throat> <clears throat> which was interesting because I'm singing the lead, right. and then they're panning over the album covers that are on the floor, and there's the Mamas and Papas album covers, and then they pan up to us talking. It was it was very surreal. It was art imitating life, imitating <laughs> art. You know, <laughs> uh, it. I thought it was a bad idea at first because they asked my permission to do it. They didn't need my permission to do it, but they, they said, do you think that this is a good idea? And I said, no, that's terrible. <laughs> Ten minutes later, I called them back and I said, I don't know what I was thinking. That's a great idea. Please yeah. do it. And there must have been some of the audience that didn't even know who you were from that, in a sense, past life. Here oh, you are. That I have had so many people that only know me from acting, and especially not slamming. Uh-huh that had no idea that I was in the Mamas and the Papas, or, or then they might not even have any idea who the Mamas and the Papas were. Yeah, that's uh, so funny. Yeah. There were a lot of... Uh, <clears throat> there was a very young audience also. I mean, it had a very large spectrum. Uh, uh, you know, Knott's Landing did. But there were a lot of young kids that watched it, kids that were in college. There were Knott's Landing clubs. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, there are a lot of people who didn't have any idea who that I'd had a career previous to that. You talk a little bit about the reunion of Knott's Landing. And also, at one point, the Mamas and the Papas came back together. In the You guys tried to come back together early 70s, if I have it right? Well, we had to come back and do an album, too, uh, because we owed we yeah. owed an album. And, they were, and uh, that album sounds exactly like it, uh, what it was. You know, four people trying to live up to their contractual obligations. <laughs> so not a, <laughs> but it's not not a, a good pleasant, album. fun time for you. People to... Like Us was not a good album. No. Now you In talk... my opinion. There are people who love it. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. There's no accounting for taste. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about being a mother on the show. You're a mother in real life, too. Is it hard to balance <clears throat> this career, world, popularity, life out in the open, and then have a real home life? How do you balance that? What have you learned from your experiences that makes that work? Well, I, it's never been a, a, a problem for me because uh, I had China after the Mamas and the Papas. And, um, and I didn't really start working on a regular basis until I started doing knots. I mean, I didn't have a daily routine. Uh, until I started Knott's Landing. But the studio was five minutes away from my house, and we had such a large ensemble cast that uh, I 
I never had to work that long. I, I, I mean, if, it, it, if you were working a lot in one week, you worked two days. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most wonderful job. <laughs> when China came to you and said, if, if that's how it went, I'm not going to be in a group now, too. Oh, I said, that's a terrible idea. I told really? her, why do you want to be in the record business? I said, it's a terrible business. <laughs> So she took your advice, and the, the, Wilson Phillips know, never happened. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, uh, they all came to me, and they said, we're going to form a group together. I said, what a bad idea. <laughs> and I said, you know, you're going to be held to an impossible standard. You're going to be constantly held up to the mamas and the papas and to the beach boys. They said, yeah, okay. <laughs> and so they overcame that. Yeah. And um, they were, they're great. They have, they released an album last year called California and um, they were worried because Wendy was pregnant and they were thought well we're going to have to work around Wendy's pregnancy we're you know we're going to have to stop when she is ready you know when she can't work anymore so we're going to have a lot of we're going to have some problems really promoting this album so when Wendy was about five months pregnant. China realized that she was pregnant. And they said, oh, boy, this is going to really be tough now. How are we going to do this? And China says, you know, I'm a trooper. I can, I, I can promote this album while I'm up to my ninth month. <clears throat> <laughs> and then a few months later, Carney got pregnant, so they, all, they gave it up. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you can't beat it sometimes. No. It just takes so it. So they all have, now Carney's going to have her baby in May, and China just had her baby in December, and uh, Wendy had her baby back in October. So so the next album will be Lullabies? <laughs> I think they'd How have did to. You know? <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Oh, really? That, that's what they're planning to do. Well, it makes perfect sense. When they come to you, do they ask musical advice? Did they say to you, even in the beginning, how do we do this? What should we do? Or was it pretty much let them figure out their own voice? No, they never asked me for any advice. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have given them some if they had asked? No. No? Why? It's their thing. Why would they come to me for advice? I, I, uh, you know, I'm not their producer. I'm not writing with them. There were some songs I wanted them to, to record. What were they? Uh, oh, dear. There was one I was just desperate for them to record, too. Now I can't remember what it was. But they never did it. Yeah. And uh, But they recorded Monday, Monday. And they recorded In My Room. So they took a, a great Mamas and Papa song and a fantastic... Beach Boy song, and uh, it makes me cry when I hear them. Do you miss singing? Not really. You did no. a solo album, though, right? Came out in yeah. the mid-70s? I did uh, an album called Victim of Romance, and that was fun. Everybody wants to do one solo album, but I didn't want to go on the road, and I didn't want to perform by myself, Yeah. <clears throat> much to the disgruntlement of a&M Records. <laughs> it's a, you, we do an album with you and you don't want to go out and promote it? And I said, no, I don't. No. <laughs> so um, it, I loved my album. Jack Nietzsche produced it. And uh, I love the album. But I'm not really a soloist. I'm a, a very good group singer. Uh, Time Magazine said some very nice things about your voice. I know. The best soprano in pop music, something like that? The purest soprano in popdom. <laughs> Not that she remembers the line. <laughs> Not that I remember that obscure line from t t Time Magazine. Yeah. <laughs> See, when you look back on all of this, can you imagine that you lived it all? Yeah. yeah. Doesn't it ever seem like See, stories I... other people tell? No. I... I'm not surprised that I've had a very interesting life because I've always been uh, very open to new experiences and I'm very brave. Um, I, I can tackle new things. I, I was, my father just kind of instilled me with a lot of 
uh, guts, I think, when I was very young. And um, I, 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 I could never just sit still and not have a career. <laughs> is there anything you've wanted to do that you didn't tackle? Is there anything you've always thought, oh, I should have tried this, or pretty much have you, have you lived them all? Well, I started painting <laughs> again, <laughs> and uh, that's really hard. Yeah. Painting, yeah. Harder than the rest of us? Yeah, because I don't have anybody to teach me how to do it yet. <laughs> if, I, if I went to a class and maybe learned some, some, some structure, uh, you know, and also about color and how to mix paints, I might have a little more success than I've had so far. But I, I did an oil painting of my dog that I'm very proud of. <laughs> well, I hope that you'll come back and join us again. And next time I'll introduce you as the artist. Yeah. <laughs> and you yeah. can show a painting. Yes, thank you thank so you, much Ernie. for coming in. A pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much. Michelle Phillips. order a transcript, call 866-652-3378 or send $6.95 to the address on your screen. Please include the name of the guest.